Hello. Welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please make sure you have your notes that accompany this lesson in your textbook in your notebook ready so that you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for listening to this lesson. This lesson provides a review of the anatomy and physiology of the eye and its structures. We will describe the techniques of physical examination of the eye. We're going to talk about diagnostic tests and patient teaching involved in prevention of risk and early detection of vision problems. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to review the anatomy and physiology of the eye and its structures. You should be able to describe the techniques of physical examination of the eye, diagnostic tests, and patient teaching involved in the prevention of risk and early detection of vision problems. Let us now do a quick overview of the eye. The eye, in conjunction with the brain, is the organ that allows vision. Vision is one of the five senses and is important for communicating with the world. Besides being the most important sense in meeting the human need for sensation and cognition, vision allows surroundings and allows independence in a patient, warns of danger, helps people appreciate beauty, work, and interactions. So remember that light is changed into nerve impulses in the eye, which are sent to the brain where images are fully perceived. Many systemic conditions as well as eye problems can affect eye and change vision temporarily or permanently. So it's important for a nurse to know that. Changes in the eye and vision can provide information about the patient's general health status and about problems that may occur in self-care. So as we're planning care, we need to really make sure that we understand our eye assessment. Light waves that pass through uh, the, the eye structures on the way to the retina are responsible for um, creating the image. So we start with the cornea here as illustrated. After the cornea we go to aqueous humor. So aqueous humor is right here as illustrated here. After aqueous humor we go to the lens and the lens is ir illustrated here as well and then we go to the vitreous humor. And each structure has a different density which causes the light waves to bend or refract to some degree and focus images on the retina back here. Okay, so uh, we remember there's six voluntary muscles. The medial rectus muscle and the lateral, lateral rectus muscle are part of those six voluntary muscles that rotate the eye and coordinate all eye movements. Remember that coordinated eye movements ensure that the retina of the eye receives an image at the same time, so not only a single image is seen. Uh, not two images. So remember the muscles around the eye are innervated by cranial nerves. We know the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens nerve uh, innervate the muscles in the eye. The second cranial nerve, the optic nerve, is the nerve of sight. It, it's con connecting to the optic disc to the brain. Uh, this part of the cranial nerve um, trigeminal nerve stimulates the blink reflex when the cornea is touched. Um, the facial nerve, cranial nerve, innervates the lacrimal ducts and the muscles controlling the lid closure. So that's important for us to remember. If all this is not something you remember, it would be good to review your anatomy and physiology. Um, so the four eye functions that provide a clear image we know uh, of near and far is refraction, popular restriction, constriction, sorry, accommodation and convergence. Let us now do a quick overview of some of the structural, structural changes that are going to be associated with aging to the eye. We know that in the older adult, there's going to be a decreased eye muscle tone that reduces the ability to gaze, uh, to keep gaze focused on a single object. We know that the lower eyelid may relax and fall away from the eye, causing a condition that's called ectropion, exposing more of the eye and leading to dry eye symptoms. We know that the lens may yellow with aging and reducing the ability of the eye to transmit and focus light. We know that aging lens, lens may harden, may shrink, and may lose elasticity, resulting in the loss of the ability to accommodate. 
Uh, other health problems related to eyes may be from diabetes mellitus or hypertension that can have serious adverse effects on vision. That also includes the drug side effects from treating other medical conditions. We want to teach the patients who have these health problems about the importance of controlling blood glucose levels and managing their blood pressure to reduce the risk of vision loss. This is very important. Let us now review some important aspects of visual assessment. You want to collect subjective information from the patient to determine whether problems with the eye or vision have impact on daily functioning. You want to immediately test the visual acuity of both eyes of any person who experiences an eye injury or sudden change in vision. So you want to assess the patient characteristics which may impact vision including nutrition. You want to ask them their age, their family history, their genetic risks and uh, their current health status. Um, as a nurse, remember to wash your hands before touching a patient's eyelids and you want to use uh, contact precautions with any patients who has drainage from the eyes. Uh, if a patient has discharge from the eye, examine the eye without without the discharge first. That just makes sense before you look at the eye that has the discharge. You want to teach the patients who have discharge from one eye to use a tissue to wipe the drainage and make sure they get rid of the tissue, but you want to use a clean tissue for the sake of the eye so you don't cross contaminate. You want to assess the blink ref reflex by bl uh, bringing a fist quickly towards the patient's eye or exp uh, expelling a syringe full of air uh, towards the eye. Uh, Pupillary assessment is involved involves examining each pupil separately and comparing and assessing for accommodation. Uh, you can measure vision um, by you know several tests. You want to test each eye separately, of course, and then you want to test both eyes together. Uh, patients who wear corrective lenses are tested both with and without their lenses. So near vision is tested for patients who have difficulty reading. Um, uh, without using glasses or any other means of vision correction. Uh, visual field testing is used to determine the degree of peripheral uh, vision and extraocular muscle function is assessed using the corneal light reflex and the six cardinal positions of gaze, which you should be familiar with right now. Okay, so you should remember that these tests assess the smoothness of the eye movement and you also want to make sure that you also know and remember that they assess the function of cranial nerve number three, number four, and number six. Okay, um, the patient with changes in visual perception may be anxious and fearful about the possible loss of vision, so you might want to be more supportive. The patient with severe de visual defects may be unable to perform some of the ADLs that they need, so you want to make sure that you're including that in the plan of care. Let us just review quickly some of the eye diagnostic tests. You've been exposed to this information and are familiar with it from um, your previous courses. And your textbook does go in great detail. If you're not familiar with this information, I encourage you to go ahead and review it as well. A perimetry is a commonly used uh, test to screen the visual fields. That's what we would call it a gonioscopy. It's a test performed with uh, when a high IOP is found or suspected and determines whether open angle or close angle glaucoma is present. Uh, we may do laser imaging of the retina of the optic nerve to create a three-dimensional view of back of the eye to see what's going on there. Uh, CT is useful in diagnosing for uh, bony structures around the eye, any extraocular muscles or tumors in the eye space. An MRI is going to be useful for evaluating the ocular structures and tumors. Uh, it but cannot be used to evaluate injuries involving metal in the eyes. Remember that uh, ultrasound examines the orbit in the eye and the high frequency sound waves. Uh, ultrasound, of course, is going to be a non-invasive way to test the, uh, uh, the eye uh, in looking at trauma, intraorbital tumors, ptosis, and uh, choroidal or retinal detachments. So that's going to be the test that's going to be used. Uh, tests used to examine the eye and specific structures are not needed for routine vision assessment that the RN is doing, but may be indicated with special uh, issues going on. An ophthalmoscopic exam allows a view of the eye, eye's external and internal structures. Uh, 
when you're using an ophthalmoscope, uh, don't use it on somebody who is confused or uh, is uncooperative. We don't want to hurt them. Okay, so make sure that you remember that. Electroretinography is the process of graphing the retina. This response to light. It is helpful in detecting any issues uh, with blood vessels, changes, or disease or drugs going on. Anytime you're taking care of a patient, you want to explain all diagnostic procedures, the restrictions and follow-up care so that the patient knows. You want to provide opportunities for the patient and family to express their concerns about any possible uh, changes in vision status. Uh, nurses really can make a big difference in uh, making sure that we're preserving vision and eye function in our patients. We can teach them about eye protection. We can teach them about adequate nutrition. And we can teach them about the importance of regular eye exams. So it's important that you know that. It's also important for you to know how to identify uh, patients that are going to be at an increased risk for eye injury from their work or any leisure in, uh, environments. You want to encourage patients to wear eye protection when performing any yard work or any wood, metal shop or chemicals or anything that they do uh, that may injure the eye. Of course, eye and head protection uh, during contact sports that require that is important. And also you want to teach a patient that um, they want to avoid excessive rubbing so that they don't traumatize their eyes. Thank you for listening in to this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this quick review of the anatomy and physiology of the eye and its structures. And I hope you're able to recall the techniques of physical examination of the eye that you've learned in previous courses, diagnostic tests, and patient teaching that's involved in prevention of risk and early detection of vision problems for your patients. For questions about this lesson or any of the corresponding notes, please feel free to email me. Have a lovely day.